Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you know, it's gets on. It's been long, like two weeks, three weeks since I posted uh, the last video. And today I'm just gonna give you guys a continuation of where I left the market last time and also what I regret from not um, making the swing trade because I catch a nice movement after identifying everything that was uh, possible for me in the market then i end up closing my thread because of this thing of saying you know what yeah i've already made enough let me go out you see those kind of stuff but at the end of the day i end up scalping i scalp a lot but today i'm just gonna show you guys how i end up being again in a swing because i knew where market was going then i was expecting something so now this is why i take the market and please remember to remain up to the end so that you can see something around the video that is gonna be amazing for you guys and uh, remember to subscribe guys and please click that uh, bell uh, notification yeah so that when i post the video you know already that you're gonna get a message you're gonna get a pop-up a notification to know that okay this guy's already post another video then from there is going to help you let me not take so long and try to explain a lot of stories you know me I always go to the point um if you guys remember on the last video we talked about how i was able to catch this uh, sell position from there and as you can check the sell position went as we predicted for it to come and run uh, this low then we end up running this low so the major target i can show you guys this side oh it's the same thing the major target was on daily time frame that was the major target because first things i was looking at this line then i end up finding okay there was a, a sort of liquidity somewhere here you see this uh, uh relative equals but then i also see this block because we had liquid it and this one was more important for me to be able to understand how am i gonna take the thread and this is what end up happening so when we get at this area the only thing that i i, I understand uh, like what i'm going to explain today is going to be how i end up catching the buy position from here and i'll catch the sale again i'm going to explain to you guys just bear with me so before i go there you know guys i always like to show you what i've done and where i went this was my cell if you can check i can go to m15 then i'm gonna show you guys i take so many trades there is a lot of picture on the public group i just don't wanna go um oh sorry guys let me show you now i'm sorry i was talking and it was another place so this was my cell this was my cell the way i took this cell i'm gonna explain to you guys how i end up taking that cell and uh, i also take another buy you know this is the same sell i also take another buy the buy but i've been trading like a lot a lot and i take another buy from where i was and up until now i'm still holding the two position because i'm holding the sell from here with a, a small lot and i have a buy from here with a, like five lots that i'm taking it to the top this five lot from here when we i get a nice buy i close almost four lots then i keep one so here i have five lots again that i'm taking it to the top and uh, i want to see because there is a, some uh, you see this uh, relative equal eyes the one we have here this is the target for the coming week i want market to come and run all this eye so the first things that i want to show you because i end up taking again another sell from there that is a long story but let me explain just this one this one is gonna be okay that is what you guys are gonna learn today so the only thing that i did from this one was when markets create this asian range i was waiting for market to come somewhere here so that i can do it i can take my thread then i did not get that chance of the market getting to where i wanted then i believe this is gonna be the la the one that i saw on m30 then i end up missing yes this is the one on m30 so I was expecting market to come to the downside, but here there was an M30 decision point. As you can check, guys, we had a decision point on M30 somewhere here. Where market come, it age midline. Market gets here, reacts because we have this decision point, then market fly to the upside. After market flying to the upside, then 
I said, okay, it is what it is. Let me try to find a way of me getting an, another entry. So the only thing that I saw was, okay, market is already run this liquidity. You see, we have a stop end of this one. So let me go back to M15. So since we have the stop end of this one, the only thing I was monitoring was, okay, if we have the stop end of that area, what is the level that market is gonna is gonna give me a position for me to do it, to take a sell position? I saw this uh, hidden base. If you can check properly at my entry, I think it must be down here. Uh, if you can check exactly, I don't know from my broker, there is no hidden base, but on trading view, there was a hidden base. So when I saw this hidden base, the only thing that I did here was like this. Because I know one of the one of the bro in the group was waiting more for market to come back to this side so that he can do what he can sell. But me, what I did was I saw there was this QML. And at the same time, while there was a QML, there was this uh, hidden base. This was my decision point. This was my decision point, and I take it. As you guys know me, I don't, I don't do these things of like the way other people they do when they have a, 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 a level like that, they put a stop loss, let's say maybe somewhere here. No, I don't do that because I trade more uh, indices. I know what they can do. They can get at your zone and give you something that you regret for the rest of your life. So when I see this, then I said, okay, so this is the law that created this eye. If market break it, already here I had the break of structure. I had the break of this law. I can say I had the break of like a shift, uh, market structure shift here. Then the only thing I was looking was a decision point. I didn't go to another time frame. My only point was I have a QML. I have a QML on this area. Hey, the market is gonna go. And to be honest with you guys, I had the big stop loss on this one because my stop loss was above, was above this block. This is what I was expecting. Let's say if market fell to get me in here, I just give it a room. I put until that area. It was like 60 somewhere there. Then I says, you know what? If market can go until this area, maybe market is gonna get here, then what if I put a small stop loss, they kick me out and market goes again my way. So this is what I did. And people, they will ask me, then how do you take the trade when there is no liquidity? No, I understand this, all this candlestick is what we call a liquidity void. If you want to know about this, go to Michael YouTube channel, ICT channel. You are going to learn about this void and other stuff. So when I saw like this, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a trade here and let me hold my trade. So this was this on and market goes again to the downside you see market pull come back and at the end of the day we go let's say you miss the trade because remember what i always show you guys we want to see something in the market that is proper for us to take a trade you can go to the low time frame and try to identify something that is going to be proper for you what is something that i call that is going to be proper you need to see something like this let's say because market is going upside market has to break this one create liquidity you know something like this we run this eye then you take your trade above that is what we normally want to see for us to take the trade i hope guys uh i'm making sense so if you can check the way market was coming to the downside market gets and touch at my zone then drop at the end of the day they pull back again then they create this area this one could be a perfect zone that you could come and say you know what let me try my luck here because market is already gift a shift. This one, I'm going to show you where how I took my buy. So you see market is already created a shift. Then market is already run this swing low. You can see here is a swing low. This one, because we have three candlestick formation. Market is already break a swing low and go to the downside. So when it's going to the upside, you know already this one become what you call your liquidity. But where is the decision point? You know this last one, you see? This last one, it becomes a zone where you could take an entry without even asking yourself so many questions. And there is also another advanced entry, the one I normally call advanced entry, where you're gonna take an entry without market break structure, like this one, um, base ignore market scam, because here it was a demand where markets break it and they trade to come and trade in it, then they go to downside. If you go more to the low time frame, then you're gonna see like, okay, it was a significant area that you could like use to come and check your trades. So you could take another trade from there. Plus we had all this one, it's also all liquidity. The one that they keep for market to hold from there. 
And here we break again this law. You could take another entry. So this, all of this was just more opportunity of you getting to the market. If you don't know how to take a snap entry, you can keep your patient, wait until market create a swing high and the swing low, plus your liquidity and market break structure. Then you know already, okay, this is going to be something proper and where market has to come for me to be able to do it, to come and take the trade. And if you can check here again, do you see what is there? Something amazing. Then you take your market to the downside. You know where market is going. Remember I told you guys I was waiting for market to come until the daily time frame. All this pullback I see, I did not close anything. I was just holding my trade. Market come to the downside as you can check even you know, inside this picture. Can you see? Market was just pulling back. Me, I was just holding my trade. You can even check to know that I hold all the position until to the downside. You see, this is uh, 11728. And if you come here, uh 11728 it's somewhere here i was still in this trade even if i see this one go to the upside i still in this trade i did not close i was looking okay if market is going to buy then let me see what is going to happen then i took a buy here guys what happened here you just laugh so what happened was when i saw market get here uh, first time I hit a stop loss because I wanted to take a buy somewhere here. That is what I wanted to take a buy inside this area. I was saying to myself, okay, let me see. I'm going to risk here. Why? Because market is already give this one and break, then they create this inducement. So the only thing that I end up, because I was trying to opposite the, the swing, because if you check here, market was trading uh, from this eye to this low. Then market come and run all this liquidity you're selling. So meaning when we are selling, this is gonna be the target. But me, I was trying to do it to do the uh, to try to opposite the market. And market get here, kick me out. Then consolidate, consolidate. After they consolidate during the kill zone, half past nine, market break to the downside. When markets break to the downside, me already on close of this candlestick, the new one open. When it just trade below a bit, then I take my trade somewhere here. Market goes to the upside. And there is a picture of that. Go to the public group. You're going to see. I just don't want to go and start searching for this picture. Then after that, there was another perfect entry. The perfect entry was because of this law. If you can check market, come again and trade. But I was looking was on M1. Uh, was on M1. Then market come back and trade again inside here. Can you see? Everything was just there. Markets come and trade again inside. This one was also another perfect buy that I took until I target this one. Market went. And this one, I miss it. Why did I miss this one? Because what I did with this one, I was expecting market to come back and run this area. Because I was in higher time frame, I think it was uh, M3. I was expecting market to run this low so that I can take an entry somewhere here. This is what I was expecting because this was a block on M15. Now, check what happened. Market went more to the upside. So when markets come again back, it come again back all the way, but failed to mitigate my zone. So when it failed to mitigate my zone, it's just that I don't want to show you guys because I sent to someone. I don't want to show you someone that I'm talking in private and tell, okay, I was talking to this person. It won't be the respect for that person. So when markets come again back to the downside, I took it when it come back from this week. Because I understand already market is not going to come. I don't know what was in my mindset that day. Then I say market is not come back to my zone. I take my entry. But I leave the stop loss exactly where it is supposed to be. Let me show you this line was on M15. was was uh, M15 decision point. What is that area again? Can you see? This area was M15. Other block open. That was like... Uh, the decision point then market went to the upside fill this inefficient price because here there was already a break of structure that i was looking remember i was looking for this break of structure for me to do what uh to come to the downside and take a, a buy a buy position again we have a stop and then market break structure they return back inside here to come and fill if you don't see it let me mark it for you let me mark it for you so this is was what happened. They run the break structure, they return back, and this is what happened. They trade. And here was another level. Let me just show you guys something here. Uh, properly. Because I remember 
Yes, and good luck. I send them also to the public group. <laughs> so that you guys know the luck. I'm not making up story. So this was the, the sell to the downside. Can you see, guys? And this was that one that I was expecting. So where is the other picture? This was the picture, the one that I was looking and saying, no, market is going to come here. I'm going to buy here and I'm going to buy here. That was the way I was looking at the market that time. So, and good luck, I send it also to the public group. Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> so, when I saw like this, then I end up doubting my zone. When market get here, I was just monitoring the markets on the low time frame. I said, you know what? Let me see what is going to happen here. How am I going to take the trade? And then, this is what happened. So, market gets here at the level. It just buy already. You know, this by the way it was happening, for me, I was, I was thinking, no, this one is going to be a trap. So let me see if market is going to come back and touch this line. That is what I was saying. If market is going to come and touch this line, then I'm going to take what? My, um, my, my, buy, my buy position. At the same time, because I was monitoring NASDAQ USA 30. On this day, I was monitoring USA 30. I'm going to try to make a video where I'm going to compare USA 30 and NASDAQ, how you need to trade both of them. If one gives you a stop hunt, let's say if you are trading USA 30, example, USA 30 uh, give you something like this. USA 30 give you a stop hunt and go to the upside. Maybe NASDAQ is just going to do something like this. NASDAQ is not going to go to the downside. So this is what I was looking that day and try to see, okay, what is happening? Then if you check, if you check the time, this was uh, 12 uh, May 14 something. And if we come to USA 30, the same time, and we try to look, uh, it was uh, 12, uh, 14. Huh? You see what USA 30 did? USA 30 goes more to the downside. Already for me, I was monitoring what USA 30 is doing. And if you check the way USA to give, USA to give it a long stop and so when I see uh, it was 14, huh? let me check again. It was, uh, yeah, 14, 44. Yes. Uh, can you see 14, 44, it was somewhere here. If you compare this low to this one, you see how USA to give that huge stop and but NASDAQ did not give that things. NASDAQ did not run this low. So when I see that already, I say, okay, now everything is complete. The other side, let me now get my entry. The only thing that I miss was a perfect entry. I miss this entry because here I had a stop and then market break. I could take it from here. But based on what was in my mindset when I was monitoring USA 30, I end up missing this trade. I said, okay, if I miss, I wanted to jump somewhere. Here. Then my mind telling me, no, don't jump. Market is going to come back. So after I see market start pulling, now I even telling myself, here I'm about to miss the trade. This is why you see guys, I take this trade here. I just take the trade and I put my stop loss here. I say, you know what, this time, if it's gonna hit my stop loss, I'm about to miss this trade. Then I take the trade. And you know, this time market is not more volatile. It's not like half past nine or something like that. The market is more soft. It's going to play until like if you are going to six, this is where you're going to see market. So market is going gonna, is gonna to start like being crazy. So when I see something like this, I said, you know what? I'm jumping here. This is why you see my trade. If you check this trade, is this this one? No, this one was Bitcoin I took. Yes, it's this one. Can you see? You're going to see I use 11722. So if you check, it was somewhere 11722. Yes, that is why I took my trade. So my trade was even better because I took it below somewhere. Here. Yes, this is why I took my trade. I took it somewhere here. Then we fly with the market. The only thing was because market break this high and return again. You know, guys, I trade more range. I understand more about range and I follow range. It can be on any time frame. I need just to understand what is my range telling me. When I get where my what my range is telling me, then I'm going to be able to do it to take any trade as long as it respect what it respect. Then I did not close my trades. So then I hold the trades until over the night. I just update my stop loss market goes the next day when it's open the only thing i see that i'm going to explain on the next video 
is gonna be about these things so the the next day when it come the only thing i was waiting while i was monitoring was this one i said uh I was on h1 if i'm not mistaken yes then i said okay uh i want to see market trade around this h1 decision point that is what i was saying okay i want to see market trade around this h1 zone and at the same time somewhere here on m15 there was another decision point that market supposed to respect and sell more but they manipulated to the upside so then i said you know what let me see what is going to happen then this is what end up happening so if you check here i'm going to explain on the, the next video here i'm just uh, touching something quick if you check here when nasdaq come to the downside around this area that is why i want you guys to pay more attention you're gonna see nasdaq did something like this nasdaq rate he colors now let me show you on usa 30. usa 30 created stop ant can you see usa 30 created stop ant if you check it's 315. if you check you see 315. So USA 30 Nasdaq create equal laws and USA 30 create stop and meaning that market on Nasdaq is going to give us a stop and when we are almost half past nine that is what I expect half past nine Nasdaq is going to give us a stop and but if you go to low time frame you're gonna see there is a clear block there uh, was on M1 I'm sure you're gonna see there is a clear block that someone could even expect like okay market you see this one someone could use this one to be like oh this one is gonna be my decision point then i'm gonna buy here and those one they use a small stop loss you just get there and you want to be a market maker your stop loss is there you see what is happening then market will end up kicking you out then go in your direction at the same time if you check almost half past nine you see then if you come to nice to usa 30 do you see what usa 30 did you see what usa 30 did so this is something that i'm going to explain on the next video and uh please guys when you are trading nasdaq make sure you look also what is happening on usa 30 or what is looking on scp 500 so that you don't expect things that you can never expect remember here guys i told you on nasdaq i took a sell position from here because nasdaq respects somewhere here to do uh, to go to the downside but check what us 30 did us 30 create a stop and while nasdaq if you go to m15 while nasdaq created this you see can you see what nasdaq create so after i take my trades then this one goes to the upside and if you check why market come back i know here there is a lot of people they'll say no this is uh this is uh what do you call a fair value gap and whatever people they'll come and say maybe market is supposed to hold from here and this is what market hold it no this is this is what i always tell people it's not about fair value gap why it is it's about the order that has been resting around the fair value gap this is why we have that inefficient price this is why we have this one so let me now check and show you guys what was happening here if you go to low time frame from this area uh, yeah from this area can you see what was here there was an order here this one can you see there was an order that was resting here this week engulfed the previous week this one was the zone that we expected market to do what to give us a proper sell if i go with this zone until the end this is what i say is base ignore what what do you see there what do you see there guys market come and fill this area what is that most of the people they'll tell you no they'll tell you it's a fair value gap how do you know this fair value gap is the one going to hold not this one that is one thing that you need to pay attention why market did not come back to this one but why market did it prefer to use the one on top because normally this is where we have the break of structure stop and market supposed to come inside here 
But why market did not come inside? And why market use the one above? So you need to pay attention to something. Markets go and feel the inefficient price because that is the area where there is an order that market did not mitigate. This is why you see markets drop all the way and get here. Then I end up scalping this, this cell. I scalped this cell. That was crazy. First I hit a stop loss somewhere here. Then I took again this cell. I think I closed it somewhere because I was expecting like, okay, this area is going to hold, but it did not hold. I closed my cell. Then I said, I'm not going to trade again. Since I had my buy from the downside, let me just hold my buy and market fly with me to the upside. So I hope this video is going to be like a proper one to someone and make sense to someone. And um, uh, please, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel. Please, 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 and go back test. That is going to be more important. Back testing is the one that is going to be more important in all this story. If you don't back test, you're not doing yourself a favor. You are, you are just killing your mindset. You're going to waste your time trying to learn without practicing is useless. So, sharp guys, I hope we're going to talk again on the next video. Uh, let's enjoy the video, sharp, sharp.